Hello, React Native developers. I hope you are well. William here, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. Since the past few years, every January, I would make a video on how to bootstrap a React Native project. The reason was that every year, the best practices would change dramatically. Now, this year is different. This year is more a showcase of how things have become a de facto standard. The JavaScript fatigue is over, and changes are more related to how much or quality of development experience has improved, which brings us to the sponsor of this video, Tab9. Tab9 is the AI-powered code completion tool which I use in all of my videos. You've been many asking me about this tool. It has been the biggest improvement to the quality of my development experience in 2020, so it was a natural fit for Tab9 to sponsor this video. More on them later. And then, I would like to show you something which is not part of bootstrapping a React Native project in 2021, but, but that might become part of it later down the road. Let's have a look. Before we start our first React Native project, let's have a look at my VS Code settings. You've been many asking me about the theme I'm using in my videos, and it's Palanite Operator from Ola Ulu, Ola Yui. Shout out, extremely talented uh, designer and developer. I tried many VS Code themes. There are many really cool uh, themes, but this one, in terms of the level of details, uh, it is my favorite. It is a matter of taste, of course, but I'm really enjoying using this theme. Then I'm using the TypeScript support, which is built in into VS Code. And then in order of priority, the second most important extension that I use is the ESLint extension. And as you know already, I have a configuration which is using the Prettier plugin. So it's also my code formatter. So if we go to the extension settings, it is enabled as a formatter. The on save, the auto formatting will be done and the validation is done for each keystroke. So extremely important extension in my uh, VS Code setting. And then a small extension you've also been asking me about is Color Alight, which is a way to visualize uh, color values in your code, extremely convenient. And then after the ESLint extension, my most important code extension is Tab9, AI-powered code completion tool. It has been very good at guessing the code I'm about to write. Let me show you an example. So we're going to create a React Native component. And so by the way, so if I go in my snippets, here I simply, in TypeScript React.json, created my own uh, snippet to have like a base component. So I'm going to use it here. I'm writing comp, and I'm accessing the snippet. And I can put my component name. Now we're going to do a pan gesture handler. So we know that we need to create uh, two animation values, translate X, translate Y. So I'm going to create, you see, so the icon here shows that it's timeline giving me the suggestions. So somehow I write T and it knows, it knows that I'm doing a lot of reanimated somehow and I'm about to write translate X or translate Y. So I'm writing translate X equals use shared value. So somehow Tab9 knows that, you know, it's a pattern I, I'm doing a lot. Use shared value has been auto-imported. And now if I press enter, it knows that I'm likely to write the same for X. Isn't that cool? I think it's very cool. So use shared value. Now let's create our pan gesture handler. So pan again, you see. You see here, it's, uh, so that's interesting. So it suggests pan gesture handler correctly. And here it suggests the way I used to write on gesture event, which is not the way I do it anymore, but I'm sure it will update eventually. So animated, animated view and style equals. So you see here again, interesting suggestions. It's not what I want to write, but style sheet absolute field. So here I press control space to import style sheet. And I'm going to write on gesture event. Again, here, Tab9 is suggesting 
the property. So the interesting thing is if I now, let's say, write on gesture event, it's also guessing that I'm doing use animated gesture handler. So it knows me quite well. Now, when you write a pan gesture handler, things are quite repetitive. We need to keep offset values. So on start, we store where the translation is. On active, we add the offset value and the value of the gesture together. And on end, we might, for instance, snap somewhere. So here I'm going to write, uh, first I'm going to declare the type of my context. Oops. And then, so this is the first parameter. And then I'm going to have, let's say, x is a number and y is a number. So this is my offset. So now on start, we have the event, the context, which allows us to keep a state across gestures. So we are going to do context.x equals translate x dot value. So again, timeline seems to be to know what I'm the code that I'm always writing. So to see where the suggestion comes from is actually quite important. Here I'm writing React Native, I'm writing Reanimated 2. I know the APIs, I know the code I, I want to write. So here, usually the completion are going to be extremely helpful. But if I'm writing maybe a code with a new API, which I don't know yet, I really want to rely on the semantic code completions. I don't want to rely on some heuristic of what uh, I might write. So if you don't know the API you're using, have a look at the icon in the code completion so you make sure that you are using a semantic values and not some heuristic value. I think it correctly guessed here that I want to do the same on the y-axis. Now on active, I am getting, so I had the correct somehow about translation x, translation y, the context. So you see it's not always 100% correct, but eventually it does get, the completion does get uh, very, very good. And then I'm going to do translate. So you see here it has a suggestion based on, it's not the code I want to write, but based on previous code I've written, we want to do translate x dot value equals translation x plus context dot x. So you see again, and then if I press enter, it knows that I want to write the same thing on the y-axis. Isn't that cool? So this was a short demo of TAP9, the AI-powered code completion tool, which I've been using in my videos and which has really improved the quality of my development experience. When creating a React Native project, you have to choose two flavors, using TypeScript or not, using Expo or not. In 2021, using TypeScript is, I feel, a no-brainer. It is not a new language. It's a JavaScript you know and love plus type annotations. The tooling around it is exactly the same, using Babel, using ESLint. The integration is so seamless. And speaking of improving the quality of your development experience, this is definitely going to bring you your biggest bang for your buck. And then in my case, because I do these videos on YouTube and I'm trying to ship these demos to you in an agile way, I'm going to use Expo. So I'm going to use the Expo CLI to create my project, Expo init, and I'm going to use the default app name. And here I'm going to choose a blank template using TypeScript. Now my project has been created and you see there is even a git init. Now the first thing I want to do is to add an ESLint configuration to my project. I have my own uh, ESLint configuration which I use across all of my projects. It's actually a pretty simple configuration. You don't need to use it necessarily. What I can recommend you is to use the uh, React Native ESLint config, which my configuration is based on. And so this configuration is amazing and I can only recommend it to you. And in fact, if you go to my own configuration, it's basically based on this configuration from React Native community. I have the TypeScript support enabled, of course. 
plus the uh, ESLint import plugin, which I really love. So it's a, my configuration is actually pretty simple. I have packaged it so I can use it across uh, all of my projects. So I'm gonna actually add it to my project and I need also to add ESLint as a dev dependency. And then I can have as a default configuration here. So dot ESLint RC. Now, if I go in package.json, so first let me check if my ESLint plugin is enabled. It looks like it because it already, I think you see on save reformatted everything. So it seems to be uh, enabled nicely, perfect. So if I go to package.json, I have the default exposed scripts and I have like some scripts which I also always used namely one to run ESLint. And here I really want max warning to be zero. In my setup, warnings should be treated as errors. And that's what uh, this um, uh, option does. And in fact, it's also because in the React Native community, ESLint configurations, there are a lot of things which are warnings that I consider to be errors. So this is perfect. And then I have also the TS uh, compiler script, which is just the same command. So I can use these scripts in CI. And you know that I'm using reanimated queue in all of my projects, which is still in release candidate. And to enable it into an expo project, there are a couple of uh, steps we need to follow. So first, we're going to install it using expo install. And you see here it's ins installing the latest stable version but the one we want to use is the version two release candidate. So let's see if it's actually mentioned here. So I'm gonna update the version number here, rerun yarn install, oops. Let me go back now to the documentation. So I need to add the bubble plugin here. I think I should have it here, presets, plugins. So now I can enable the reanimated plugin. So let's check if everything works. I'm gonna create an animation value. Let's call it with, so using use shared value from reanimated queue. And here maybe I can create an animated view. And I'm gonna add an animated style to it. Animated style, use animated style. And maybe we return with, which is with.value, height, let's pick 100, background color, blue. And so let me refresh. Okay, we don't see anything which is expected. And so use effect when the component mounts, we can add to with, so do with.value, with timing from reanimated queue to, uh, I don't know, 300 duration. It's just a CD demo, five seconds. Let me import these things here. Let's have a look. So yeah, reanimated two is enabled nicely. Now let me show you a weekend project that I started. It's not part yet of bootstrapping a React Native project, but it might become. In reanimated two, there are worklets, JavaScript functions, which are compiled and executed on the UI thread. And via a Babel plugin, the JavaScript code that lives on the JavaScript thread and the worklet which live on the UI thread coexist nicely. And TypeScript nor ESLint have a clue that actually these functions live into two different environments. And I would like to show you an ESLint plugin which relies on the TypeScript compiler information that I've built in order to help us statically catch 
potential errors when writing worklets. So here I have the use animated style, which relies on some mix function from Redash. So let me create a function, for instance, called add a b, and it returns a plus b. Now, if I were to use this function into a worklet, so via use animated style, so one, one, and you see here ESLint is complaining because it knows that add is not a worklet function. And now if I add the worklet directive, it stopped complaining. Isn't that cool? I think this is gonna tremendously improve our user experience when writing reanimated to code. Here I'm using mixed from Redash, and you see here the JS doc annotation worklet. So the Yeslin plugin knows, resolves the function from the Redash module and knows that uh, this function is a worklet. So this is just a project I got started with. There are other interesting checks we can add. For instance, if you have a side effect into use animated style or use derived value. So I'm pretty excited about this uh, new Yeslint plugin that I've been working on, which relies on the TypeScript uh, type information to guess if you are communicating between the JavaScript thread and the UI thread in, the, in a way that might be buggy. I hope that you enjoyed this video on my development setup and on how to create a React Native project. Thank you to Tab9 for sponsoring this video. Please let me know your own recipes when creating a React Native project. And if you have things you want to share with me about your development setup, I am looking forward to talk to you soon. And until next time, happy hacking.